don't seem to be they don't seem to be giving them enough time to operate and that will uh, that'll cost you in the type of offense that Tennessee Tech has. And Patrick Pope used to having, as you say, lots of time. There you see a good shot of Pat. Pope drops straight back. He's caught from behind. Once again, it's number 93. And that's the big man for Caldwell. Cincinnati, Caldwell. And that'll bring up the fourth down. Caldwell has been in on about 70% uh, of the plays thus far on defense. He is a good one. 6'2", 225 pound junior. Graham, it's blocked! And picked up. Still bouncing around. Tennessee Tech may get it back, but there's a flag thrown. The ball still rolling around. It was blocked up there by number 17, I believe, Terry Noble, the cornerback. He's a senior from Somerville, New Jersey, with a flag on the play. We'll just have to wait and let the referees uh, work this you, one out. That can really hurt you. I was talking earlier. It's against uh, Tennessee. I think it's going to be against Tech. Delano Kelly, number 16, also in there. That, that is one of those that can really break your back. Tech uh, needing to get the ball way away from their end of the field because Cincinnati has been playing on their end of the field all day. Watch Let's again right again. here. Going high up to block it. Number 17, and we've called his name before, I believe. Noble, the quarterback. And, of course, now it's kind of like the Keystone Cops movie. Everybody gets a hand on it, but nobody's able to do anything with it. The flag we saw thrown up the field in the vicinity of Bob Jicks are talking it over with Bruce Hatfield of Tennessee Tech. We'll just wait for the call. Illegal man downfield. So it's going to be a big break for Tennessee Tech, I guess. As we see the offensive unit for Tech come back on the field. And a very big break for Tennessee Tech. That is the indication, I believe, or I'm not sure. Maybe too many men on the field. We'll see. They're still talking about it. Well, I think people will talk about this one for a few days, no matter what the, what the final outcome is. You see, Dave Curry, the coach from Cincinnati, is not too happy with this turn of events. Tennessee Tech is inside Cincinnati territory at the 48-yard line, first down at 10. Patrick Pope trying to call signals to Terry Goodlow, and the crowd is booing so loud they can't hear him. Complete to Gilstrap at the 30 or 40-yard line, now down to the 39. So uh, what, Kenneth Gilstrap picks up nine. What they did was flood the zone. What they've had, the defender has been coming across and making the receiver commit. That time they overloaded, and Gilstrap simply did a little two-yard pattern right there beneath. You see how the defender's turned around? He's not watching Gilstrap. He's watching, watching Campbell back up field. And uh, Tennessee Tech able to pick up eight yards, and that's an improvement over what we've been able to do thus far. So I'd suggest that they continue flooding that zone. Second down, a little over a yard for a first down. Tech inside the 40-yard line. Pope turns the corner, and he's got a first down for Tennessee Tech. He's going for the end zone. Got one man to get through. He's down to the seven. Patrick Pope showing that fantastic running ability we've seen all year long. Pope says, come on, guys. Give me a break. Don't twist my bad ankle. You'll see he's getting a little, a uh, little ginger there. He did what only he can do. Now watch this. How many quarterbacks do you know that are going to have uh, this kind of ability? Watch him. He simply makes a little stymie step, takes it outside, and that explosive speed and his ability to change directions. He don't. They don't know where he's going. First and goal from the six. Patrick Pope averages four and a half yards per carry. That's almost unbelievable for a quarterback. But he is so quick. He's going, he, he rolls out to the left, being chased in the backfield, throws it away, no flag. The crowd doesn't like it, and Pope is still on the ground. Art Sheffield, number nine, was back there chasing him. The linebacker, Sheffield, chasing him all over the place, but Pope able to get rid of it and saved about a seven-yard loss. He wanted to throw to the right as he came out, and he was forced to turn back to the left. There you see Sheffield. Sheffield being a good athlete, Pope simply says, let me do a volleyball pass or anything. He did have Campbell over there in the area, so they didn't count it as uh, intentional grounding. 
But Tennessee Tech, with that pocket collapsing very quickly, he's going to have to either get rid of the ball or do, or do something to loosen up that defense. This homecoming crowd in Cincinnati clapping, wanting a big goal line stand here. Pope gives it to White. Touchdown, Tennessee Tech. There you go. Right up the middle. Good job up there. Offensive line of Tennessee Tech. He follows on the heels of Scott Shermer and Clark Ritchie. We'll watch it right here. The, the left-hand side of the Tennessee Tech offensive line, along with Kevin Martin, the center, uh, pushes him out, and he goes. That's the job that they've been needing. And Gil White picks up his second touchdown of the year. Ryan Weeks in to try the point after. Bring Tech within three. It's up, and it is good. So it's 10 to 7. The University of Cincinnati unable to stop Tennessee Tech, and the short passes have hurt them. The short passes and the big penalty, Steve, back when Tennessee Tech was backed up, had the kick blocked, and that was all nullified, and they got the ball about the 50-yard line. They moved it down the field since then. But that Coach, was the turning point. Coach Curry says that his back or the team team's backs are up against the wall. They're trying to get a winning season this year, and uh, we'll see it again. We'll watch right there as White simply bowl, bowls his way over behind the good offensive blocking of the offensive line we talked about earlier, Shermer. Richie and uh, Ke uh, Kevin Martin. <laughs> Lost my train of thought there for a moment. Gil White, 6'2", 210, a senior from Lebanon, Tennessee. He's a good size for a fullback. He and Hayward both. Ryan Weeks will tee it up. Deep for Cincinnati will be McKinney and Hunter. McKinney, the leading returner on the team, will be closest to this sideline. He's number 44. And Dwayne Hunter is number 37. He averages about 8 or 20 yards a carry on kickoffs, with uh, McKinney averaging about 22. So Tennessee Tech wakes him up here in Cincinnati, scoring a touchdown on Gil White's run over the left side, about a six-yard run. Ryan Weeks, he goes for McKinney at the three, four-yard line. McKinney takes it, going to the right-hand side, and he stopped inside and the, ball the 20. Comes the ball Tennessee comes Tech has it. Tech takes over 18-yard line. So Tennessee Tech right now putting the whammy on Cincinnati. Fred Edgington uh, underneath all that pile up. I believe that was Jason Green. Sidney Holston, Terry Wright. They were all there. Let's so see who makes the we'll hit. We'll watch the hit right here. Boom. Good job. And the ball pops. Jimmy loose. Hall. That's Jimmy Hall that makes the hit. Who picks Sydney it up? Sidney Holston is in there. Looks like maybe Terry Wright. We'll take another angle. Look at it again. Good, good uh, uh, blocking down or good downfield pursuit right here. Well, we still couldn't pick up the number, couldn't but Tennessee Tech is a benefactor of a big turnover right there. First and ten. They give it to Rivers. He'll pick up four. Uh, Carl, Carl had the call a while ago on what that penalty was. Carl, tell us what that was about when Tech uh, got the ball back a minute ago. Uh, University of Cincinnati was called for illegally batting the ball, which gave uh, Tech the ball back. Illegally That's batting right. The ball. On the right sideline, one of them in the scr mad scramble. Of course, you can't advance a fumble, so if he bats it toward the in end zone, they can pick it up and get six points. Thank you, Carl. Appreciate you checking that out for us. Goodlow goes into motion right. The give to Rivers. Rivers has a hole over the middle, and he is close to a first down. Picks well, up about six. That's the difference between the, the first quarter and what's happening right now. In the first quarter, Tennessee Tech did not have anything going on the, on the ground, didn't have anything going in the air. Right here, you see good blocking. The defense is loosened up just a bit, and Lorenzo Rivers doing it like he can so well, going right over the middle. He's finally hauled down by Caldwell, the defensive end, number 93. They're about but, six inches short. They won't measure. They have Dunlap, uh, Hayward, and White, the bone, bone crusher pressure. wishbone in there for Tennessee Tech. Third down and about six inches. Pope, the quarterback, trying to draw them off sides. And work. they'll have to take a five-yard loss. Still third down. Well, that, that works sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't. And as we see a helicopter come over the uh, stadium here. Gee whiz, he's going to land on the lights. <laughs> Look at that. The helicopter is inside the stadium, and there's an airplane right up above him. Pulling well, a candidate they're, side. They're advertising somebody for judge, and I don't know what the helicopter is all about. 
But whatever the case, Tennessee Tech third down and six. Still in the bone crusher. Hope rolling right, chasing the backfield. Hit back at the 30. And a big loss for Tennessee Tech. As Fourth it, down, and they are out of field goal range almost. Weeks could get it from 47, but will they try it? Oh, I think they'll have to try it here because uh, you've got nothing to lose other than a little field position. you got everything to gain. You can tighten it up to uh, tie a score. And Weeks will come in to try the field goal. Struggling a bit this year. I believe he's three for ten. That's unofficial. We'll check it before, uh, before the game is out. Coach Jim Raglan has confidence in Weeks' foot. And it's almost there. Good. Balls. Yes, it is That's good. Oh, Ryan that. Weeks. Oh, me. That one just fell across. A 47-yarder. And that ties the score, folks. Ryan Weeks coming through when you need him. I'm telling you, that'll do something for your enthusiasm. Ryan Weeks, that, that kick did not look like it was going to make it at all, and it just barely fell over. We'll watch it right here. Folks, is that close or is that close? Woo -wee. Well, maybe he didn't want to waste too much energy on it that he didn't have to waste. So <laughs> He's now 4 for 11 on the year, and that is his longest field goal of the year. He's kicked them 2 from 23, 1 from 35, and uh, this one from 47 yards out. So Ryan Weeks... That should be a confidence builder for that young man, the sophomore. Been having some trouble this year and uh, coming through in a big way here to tie the score in Cincinnati. Well, Coach Jim Raglan didn't doubt him. He sent him in there to kick the thing. So Tech right back in the thing after in the first quarter being down 10 points to zip. They bounce right back. And with 8 minutes and 49 seconds left in the second quarter, uh, you know, it's a 10-10 ball game. McKinney back with Hunter to receive the kick. Ryan Weeks to kick off for Tennessee Tech. Weeks gets away a good one. McKinney goes back and it's through the end zone. Weeks puts a lot of foot into it. There's nothing like kicking a field goal from 40 yards or so to, to boost your ego just a bit, make you put a put a real foot in the next I kickoff. I think confidence is the key there word There you here. go. There you see some of the crowd at Nippert Stadium. And holds 26,590-something, folks. And that's us right there. Is that us? I don't us. even see you, Jerry. I don't know. That's sorry. us. <laughs> well, was Jerry's wearing you, the white shirt. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't see me from hiding behind my glasses. First and 10 from the 20 for the Bearcats. McCoy under center. Gives it in the backfield to McKinney, and he picks up two. Tennessee Tech's defense holding strong now. Well, that's the kind of thing you look for. Marlon Placide underneath there. Uh, I think uh, Hatfield was in on the tackle also. JoJo Swafford was there. You know, you get a gang tackle, and the, the guy picks up two, rather than what happened in the first quarter with a guy picking up 15. I have played for a small school, Jerry, and I know what it's like to go against a, a large team, not in college, in high school, but a Division I team. Anytime you play against the guys that played against the number three team in the nation, it's got to be hard to get your concentration and confidence level up, and it's taken Tennessee Tech into the second quarter to do that. Now they have McKinney Squares hits him at the line of scrimmage. He picks up one. He and Hatfield make a tandem over there on the runner. And the runner was Al McKinney, but uh, McKinney couldn't do much. Picked up maybe two yards. Going to bring up a third down and long. We'll watch right here. McCoy, simple toss sweep type play. And boom, right there. We see it happen. Tennessee Tech Squires is all over him, and then Hatfield gets there to finish him off. Well, they're not known for their rushing offense. They did have some very much success so far in the ball game, but right now they're being stopped. Uh, they go out of the shotgun with McCoy at quarterback. They'll send Davis in motion to the right, and McCoy drops straight back. Plenty of time over the middle of Davis, incomplete, and boy, he threw a rifle pass. He really did. It, there was only a three-man rush on the play. Tech in his prevent-type defense, uh, basically they've got uh, eight men back there defending. We'll watch it right here out of the shotgun. McCoy sets up, and look at the arm here. Wow. And Overgall is into punt for the Bearcats. There's a uh, first string punter, Jeff Jones. We saw him warming up before the game. Hissom trying to get off the field, and he'll make it before the ball is snapped. But Overgall, who's the kickoff man into punt, he's the second string punter. Let's see what he can do with it. Well, he hits it he like gets a, a champ. beauty. 
51 yards in the air. Isom takes it, and he's stopped with no gain. There on the stop is number 42 for the Bearcats, and that is Bob, Bob Leshnack. Leshnack, the defensive, defensive tackle. tackle. Number 42, he's a defensive tackle. 5'11", 230 pounds from North Ridgeville, Ohio. So Tennessee Tech will take over at about the 29-yard line. Not bad field position. First down and 10. And they're going to run this poor guy on the sidelines down here with the stick to death. Well, he's trying his best to find the mark. We've had some problems with that in the past few games. Oh, yes. Eddie Hayward in at fullback again with Patrick Pope, the quarterback, showing blitz. Hey, our Pope takes it. Now he pitches it to Rivers. Rivers is over the 30 to the 35. A pickup of six yards for Lorenzo Rivers. Well, Pope able to sense the uh, blitzing of all the linebackers. Everybody came on the play. Uh, I don't know if he checked off at the line or not, but you see everybody crowded up there. That was designed to be a little trap play. And they were pulling the guard on that when Scott but, Shermer got in a good block. The Sherm. And as a result, Tech has a second down and call it four. Tennessee Tech been using those guards very effectively, pulling them on the option plays the past couple of weeks. This time, Pope to throw. He's got some time. He's going long for Gilstrap. Gilstrap comes back for it. It's batted away up in the air, incomplete. And Gilstrap with a word or two for the man who was defending him on the play. And that's all it is, words right now. But they were. There were three men covering him. There was no uh, flag on the play, but Gilstrap evidently thinking that someone had a hand on him. Terry Noble, the man well, who blocked they, the punt. They were kind of all over him, but uh, they were all going for the ball, according to the referee. And well, they were. They didn't even see it bounce away. Well, you see at the end of the play, yes. a little extracurricular activity there, but number 17 on Gilstrap. And there so. is a Cincinnati player down on the field. And look, they're examining the left knee, it looks like. Maybe the... We won't speculate on that as we hope the young man is okay. We're going to watch again. Gilstrap. That's it, what he was upset that's what about. He was Noble upset taking about. him down by the helmet after the play is over. Of course, now a receiver is fair game once the ball is touched. Well, that's You can true. tackle him. You can knock him down. Do whatever you want. And that was the case. But Gilstrap didn't like the manner, I'd say, uh, grabbing by the helmet in which he was taken down. Boy, there's all kinds of air traffic around here. I know the controller at the airport here must be a busy man. There you see the balloon. They got a balloon. Now they got the plane coming back over right over the stadium, and I haven't seen the helicopter again. But gee whiz, right in this stadium area, they have plenty of air traffic. Well, they, the, they are. <laughs> Our director, Richard Castle, says you ought to see a game at Shea Stadium. Well, I'll tell you, it's uh, one of those situations we're not accustomed in Cookville, Tennessee, to having hot air balloons over the stadium and helicopters. And we do have some, some small uh, private aircraft that fly by from time to time and greet us. Kenneth Gilstrap, by the way, uh, on that last reception, you saw him going for the ball. He's 10th in career receptions at Tech with 59, third in receiving yardage, 1,200. That was coming into the ball game. And uh, he also has some long catches this year, a 72-yard pass from Patrick Pope against Moorhead, the fifth longest in Tennessee Tech history. And uh, he has the school record for the most catches and most yardage in one game. In fact, I believe that he is ranked uh, this season among uh, 1AA players in the nation uh, for the longest or the most yards uh, gained in pass receiving in a ball game. So Kenneth Gilstrap doing a fine job for Tennessee Tech this year. I agree with that, Steve. Lorenzo Rivers is 18th in rushing. He averages 9.5 yards per carry. That's, there you that's see Caldwell is the man who's down, and they don't want to lose him, number 93. Uh, he's, uh, they've, I think he's gone for the game. That, that looks like the left knee that they were examining, and they're not putting any weight on it at all. We really hate to see that, of course, any time there's an injury. But if there were to be a player that would be beneficial for Tennessee Tech to have out of the game, it would be that young man right there. He's been playing Defensive in Tech's end. backfield all day. 6'2", 225 pounds. He's a junior from Oxford, Mississippi, or Oxford, Michigan. Check that. And they do lead him off the field. As you say, Jerry, the left knee giving him some problems. They get him to the sideline. Now let's go back to some live action, ready for some football. The crowd getting a little bit restless. As they have a four-man rush on the on the defense now and the prevent-type offense with third and five. 
Tennessee Tech to give to Hayward. He breaks free. First down, Tennessee Tech. He's over the 50. They can't stop him until he gets down to the 38. Eddie Hayward, big yardage. Making the defenders pay the price. He tried to come up and meet him in the hole. 27-yard pickup. He picks up 27 yards, 17 of which uh, were on his own effort. Watch right here. See there, uh, Averett sealing out. Then watch him run over that man. This man shakes free, picks up another five, 10, 12 yards on his own. That's the article about effort. Leonard Cry being a punishing runner and liking to run straight ahead. Eddie Hayward is the same type of runner, and we have seen him so many times. To give to Hayward again, this time he stopped by number 85 for uh, the Bearcats, that's Chris Asbeck. Asbeck was right there, not much shaking, didn't fool anyone, he still picked up three yards, or two yards. Tech on the move in the second quarter with six minutes and 32 seconds left, the score tied 10-10. And Eddie Hayward is 11th in career rushing at Tennessee Tech, 1,300 yards coming into the ball game today. A thousand yard season last year with uh, or two years ago in 85 with a wishbone. This time Pope has time incomplete to Gilstrap and it's dropped Whoa. by Cincinnati's number 19. That's John, John Lewis. Lewis. Lewis was there and it was actually closer to Lewis. It was Gilstrap. Gilstrap got a little bit of a piece of it and then Lewis got a piece of it but neither one of them able to haul, haul it down and that could have been a very big turnover for Cincinnati. Tennessee Tech not able to to do much in that little underneath pass today. Uh, either Pope's been throwing a little bit over or behind or whatever. Not much shaking there yet. Third down and eight for Tennessee Tech. They are about 47% on third down conversions. There's 6.09 to play in the first half. The score is tied at 10. Patrick Pope dropping back. He's throwing to Goodlow, and Goodlow didn't look back until the ball was already thrown. So Tennessee Tech will have to turn it over and they send Tracy Graham in to do the honors. Well, that was another one of those situations, Steve, where a timing pattern and Goodlow was supposed to turn on a certain county, did not quite turn, and Pope delivered the ball. Nobody there to receive it. Mukes back for Cincinnati, and he angles for the sideline. It's going to hit at the five. It's knocked back, and no, they, Jason Green gets it in the end zone. A good effort by Tennessee Tech. And number 45 on the play is John Webb, and he's a freshman from Rockwood. John does a lot on these special teams. He's usually the first man down. He's going to be a good one. Uh, Coach Ragland very wisely using some of the freshmen, sophomores on those specialty teams, trying to get a little experience. And Webb's impressed us thus far this year by being all the way around the ball every time he's in there. So Tennessee Tech controlled the ball for quite a while there. There is now 5.56 to play in the first half. McCoyne back to throw, and he hits Davis, and it's going to be right on the first down marker. I think it's going to be a first down, Steve. Right at the 30, just maybe an inch over the line, so that will be a first down for the Cincinnati Bearcats. McCoyne Cin hitting his favorite receiver, Davis. And Cincinnati able to seal out up front with that offensive line of theirs able to seal out Tennessee Tech and uh, give McCoy some time back there in the pocket. That's one of the difference between the two quarterbacks that we've seen thus far. First and 10, the give is in the backfield to Cry. Cry picks up seven. Sinkfield, uh, number 14, was uh, on the receiving end of a little bit of a after, after look there, got keeps pushing him down the field, finally knocks him down after the play's been dead for about four or five seconds and helps him up. In one double-A like ball, it. Tennessee Tech is 11th in rushing defense. We'll see if they can stop him here. Give to Cry again, and Tech is having problems with Cry. Well, there's nothing to cry about, pardon the pun, because <laughs> oh. they're trying to oh. arm tackle him, and you cannot tackle a man of that size with just your arms. you got to put a shoulder or a headgear into him, and they're not able to do that yet or haven't been able to do that. They've been trying to arm tackle him. You can't do it. One more of those, Jerry, and we're bringing Carl in. <laughs> Carl's going to be sitting. Uh, you'll have to pardon these puns, uh, Steve. I did that a lot when Dwight was doing the play-by-play. Uh, -play Is that why he's gone that's now? That's why he's gone now. <laughs> McCoy, the quarterback, first and 10 for Cincinnati, looking left, and he's got Davis incomplete and Tony Sinkfield on the coverage. Sinkfield all over him, really. Sinkfield uh, doing a better job of coverage there. The quarterback, that had to be a timing pattern. He could not have thought he was open. But it's going to bring up a second down and 10. Tech 
needing very desperately to put some pressure on that quarterback. He's and got Danny, all the time in the world back there. Danny McCoy wants to do well against Tennessee Tech because you know the news is going to get to Livingston. Well, sure. The and, uh, people at home watching us now. That's right. And uh, he's been having a little bit of trouble with completions. This time he's chasing the backfield. Davis gets free. Hatfield chasing him. And Sinkfield and Hatfield put him down. Not, at, not until he picks up a first down, so McCoyne throws a strike after being really pressured in the backfield. 25-yard play right there. McCoyne showing, showing his cool under fire as he scrambles around, looks for something to happen, and then finds his receiver down there. We'll watch it right here. You see there? He's avoid, hand on. He avoided Squires. He avoided another guy and throws an absolute strike. And his receiver, number 12, Billy Davis, simply takes off and picks up 25 yards. McKinney takes it on the left side, and he's stopped by Jimmy Isom coming up from the free safety position. Well, they had four of his friends there with him. Sinkville was there. Also, uh, Squires, Marty, uh, Squires was Wright. there, and Terry Wright was there. They give him three yards on the carry. Edgington comes into the ball game. Out goes Hissom, St. Phil, and Marlon Placide. Tech wanting to call of illegal procedure. The throw is over to Hunter. Squires almost has him. Now he's stopped. He reverses his field, and he's caught by the heels. He gets away. He could go. Isom tries him now, and he gets him down along with Frankie Bankhead. Oh, and I man. know the coaches are not going to be happy with that. Tech has a man down on the field as the trainers come on. Well, that's one of those broken plays that just absolutely gives you nightmares. How the runners stop with a two-yard loss, we'll watch right here. That's designed to be a little swing pass. We'll see it right here. All right, he's going to be chased out to the right. He says, oops, can't make it this way. One guy misses. That's Tennessee Tech's Marty, or Thomas Squires. And then as he comes back, that's when you set up the kill shots. That's when the guy's coming, looking at the runner and gets pinched from the inside. Jimmy Isom taking all the fakes, making them good, making a good open field tackle, helped out by Bankhead, but not before a very big pickup. 22 yards for... Uh... Hunter and uh, Tex man down. I haven't got his number yet. And That's 23. That's going to be Wright. Terry Wright. Tennessee Tech doesn't want. One thing you have to worry about in a game against a team like Cincinnati is injuries. And in every game you have to worry about that, Steve, but particularly when you're playing a, a big physical team, uh, there is a little bit difference in the level of play between the divisions. But today, not much difference in the level of play as it's not at 10 to 10 with 336 to play in the first half. McCoy, the quarterback, first and 10 from the 13. Fakes right, he's almost caught. Three men chasing him, he gets away, and he's gonna take it inside the 10 yard line. And he falls down there in front of Frankie Bankhead. So McCoy showing some real scrambling ability. I'm telling you, that's what makes him uh, one of the great ones. Tennessee Tech right now probably wishes they'd recruited just up the line there. And well, had that I know they did wrestler. recruit him. He, he was on as well. We'll look at the replay. There's Edgington misses that. him. Jix. Jix misses him. Squires misses him. And he holds up the defensive secondary. And finally, he is tackled over there. Bryant Wyatt was there. Second down Bryant at the nine-yard line for the Bearcats of Cincinnati. They send Cry into motion right. The give is to tack it over the right. Isom comes up and makes the stop. But uh, Jason Green pinches it down inside then, closes it down uh, in order to make that stop. Also, Marty Stewart was there. We talk about uh, McCoy. He was on his way to Tennessee Tech and lured away by then Cincinnati coach Watson Brown. Brown, a Cookville native, and that's one reason that McCoy came here. Of course, Watson Brown now coaching at Vanderbilt University. It's third down and two at the five-yard line a for big the Bearcats. Play. This is a big play both ways, Steve. Oh, and that was a big Tech's play offside. Tech's defensive line jumps, and the give is over the left. He might have been close to a first down, but the flags had been thrown. That's going to be a automatic first down. I believe it's a halfway. Well, it's, it's going to be very close. It'll either be a first down or within a couple of inches of first down. Penalty halfway to the goal, of course, from where they are. Right. 
Tennessee Tech call for jumping off sides. Two more balloons now enter the picture. Those are off in the distance. Those are hot air balloons, and of course, <laughs> we, we could fly those in Cookville yes. uh, with our telecast. <laughs> so, some of yours truly is hot air. They don't have to have the burners. All they have to do is let us sit in the basket and talk you got for a few it. minutes. You got it. It's a first down. And